Welcome to Dimension Papers. Today we're going to talk about painting up some gray fur. So you've been painting up your miniatures with a brush for a very long time and you're interested about getting into an airbrush and finding out what that's all about and how it could save you some time, especially when you have a huge backlog. Well, this is going to help you because today we're going to talk about painting up some gray fur, but in the process I'm teaching you how to use an airbrush, if you're new to an airbrush, to create really quick transitions for your models. Let's go down to the hobby desk. Alrighty, so we're going to start off with some gray Steinol Res Primer. I do like to use Steinol Res Primer because it's self-leveling, which means that I don't have to worry too much about a little bit of overspray or, you know, getting a little too much on, you know, it's not even an issue. So I'm going to paint it all up and I'm going to wait for it to dry. And then I'm going to hit that bottom piece and concentrate solely using Badger Fur. Now Badger Fur is from a paint company called Minotaur. Now you don't have to use Badger Fur. This is just what I use for this. If you start off with a mid-tone gray and work in a lighter tone gray on the base, creating a fade transition from the darker to a lighter, it really does make the miniature pop and gives it a lot of definition. That means that if you have higher contrast, you're going to see this model from across the table really create some stunning transitions that'll make the miniature really appeal to mainly anybody who watches it because people who love um, doing these kinds of transition really uh, buttery smooth transitions usually with a brush wet blending can it can be achieved I always find it easier to hit it with an airbrush to really make um, those transition easily you're gonna see the transition going from lighter right there now we're gonna go from that light gray to an ivory uh, or any kind of off white. I would not use pure white in this instance because in life even white wolves are not completely pull pure, pure white. They have a little bit yellow tinge to them. Um, so you want to create that. So I'm using ivory for this uh, white. Now again you don't have to use ivory. You can use any other off white that you would like to use for the bottom but you notice that the bottom now is starting to really come into its own it has the super light in the middle i'm going to hit the nose because i really do want that to be a focal point of the miniature uh the face to give it character but yeah the underside and then the face itself usually you highlight the face or create deep contrast in the face because that is going to be the focal point of your miniature. So you really want to draw the viewer's eye to it. All right, so it's really starting to look good. You see the transitions right there. Look how quickly and simply that was done. And um, that was one step. That's the step when you come to just the highlights. Now time to get into the, sh the darker areas. And I'm using none oil shade. Now you can use an ink to do this. Intensity has excellent black. Um, and there is quite a few, but I'm using none oil from Citadel Games Workshop to just get that black on the top and really getting that fade. You notice that going from almost black to a mid-tone gray to a lighter gray all the way up to that ivory color and there's your transition. There is a beautiful transition to make your fur truly pop. Again, hitting it with the airbrush, I usually hit it with uh, anywhere from 18 to 20 uh, PSI uh, on the airbrush uh, dialing that in uh, to get these kind of transition and fades and if you're going to do so uh, thinning your paint is essential no matter what it is I always thin 
even this uh, I thin just with a little bit of water and usually when I paint with an airbrush I build up layers the same thing with a paintbrush but in this case um, it actually dries quicker and the process is much quicker so it's basically the same kind of results you can get with a paintbrush the only thing is is that you're saving time with an airbrush that's why I always say that having an airbrush is totally a worthy investment if you do value your time and want to save it now if you want to take your time on each model and you know say be it a month or two months to get these kinds of transitions you know uh, working on a model maybe you work I, at at a place and then you come home to work on the model like an hour a night or so if that's the case then an airbrush is a worthy investment because you save so much time you see i'm doing multiple layers of this nun oil to increase the contrast and it's really starting to come in on its own citadel shades are usually meant for washing a miniature in it uh getting all the recesses but when using it in this uh fashion you are really getting that subtle fade transition and really building up some dark colors into the miniature. Now, you do this with brown. I do this with all different kinds of colors. This is a gray wolf, so I wanted to hit with black on the top. Just go up to that white. You can do quite the opposite. Have a black chest and going up to a white top. Uh, it, and it's just as easily done without any issues whatsoever. You know, see that using this technique, you can quickly paint up an army of wolves without an issue and a lot of the uh, war gamers you, you guys want to get your miniatures on the table but you really want them to look good to the point where you're proud of them this is a super easy way to get that white fur <laughs> and to make those transitions now again you can use different colors you can use beige uh, the ivory on the on the belly, a beige mid-tone, and then use like a brown citadel shade, uh, serapon sepia for the top as well. There's all different kinds of combinations you can do to create this kind of fade. All right, next up, yes, yeah, some brush work. Now we're going to do some edge highlighting, and I hit this with FW inks. Payne's Gray. I do like the way that Payne's Gray ink is really controllable when it comes to catching those edges and yeah i go to town i do not i do not dry brush here i want to add a personal detail and i'd like to show where the sun is hitting the fur and really glistening over and having that control is really important to me while i'm painting so that i'm going and i'm using a uh, windsor and newton series 7 brush i have a link in the description if you're interested in picking up that brush or if you're picking up an airbrush or anything like that uh, it's an Amazon affiliate link. The channel does get a kickback if you buy those things without uh, any extra or additional cost to you if you'd like to support the channel. All right, so edge highlighting. Notice that I'm using this the side of the brush and not the tip of the brush. When you use the tip of the brush, it's called freehand. When you use the side of the brush, you're using edge highlighting techniques. And actually, it does save you time to use the edge of the brush and give you more control. Also, take a look at my hand position, how my pinky is actually touching that pill bottle. And when I do that, I am limiting, limiting the motion of my hand. And when you limit the motion of your hand while painting, you gain more control. And that's exactly what I want to do here. My hand actually shakes, so bracing your hand while painting is definitely something I highly recommend that you do. Also, when you're painting edge highlighting, I like to put a little bit of slow dry uh, into the mix on my wet palette. So this way, while I'm painting those edge highlights, it actually you know, takes a while for it to dry. I noticed that when I'm painting edge highlights, it usually takes me a long time. All right, let's go on to the outro. Well, thank you for tuning in to this video and really do appreciate that. If you'd like to support this channel, sharing is the best thing you can do with others. I also have some affiliate links, Patreon page, and even a tip jar down in the description below. If you do buy something for the Amazon affiliate links, the channel will get a kickback at zero cost to you. But even if you don't do any of those things, I'm really glad you came to hang out today and I really hope that you learned something. Well, if you like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush.